Hello everybody, it's Tommy and welcome back to my channel. Today we are building a underwater mermaid palace. I am so excited to show you guys this video. If you guys could see me smiling, I have not. Let's just say I, I build a lot of things, obviously. I put out a couple builds a week. A lot of them I like, obviously. I don't put out things that I don't enjoy. However, I am like what they, I don't know how to describe it other than people have told me and I kind of agree that I have an artistic eye and one of the worst things about that is that you tend to be very critical of yourself and your own artistic things. So when it comes to drawing and things like that, I tend to be overly critical of myself because I always see the flaws in my own art and I see what I could have done better and things like that. So I'm very hard on myself um, and that results in me like liking everything I do, but never really loving everything I do. It's a really weird, bad complex. But every once in a while, I do something that I love and it inspires me so much. It makes me actually want to play this game because I am a builder first and foremost. So I don't often really feel the need or the desire to play the game. Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily because of the game itself. I think the fact that I spend so much time building in it kind of substitutes for the gameplay that I just feel like I spend so much time in it. I don't want to play it in my free time, but this build totally had me feeling the opposite of all of that. I love this build. I think it's one of the best things I've ever done. Uh, it made me want to play the game and it is a custom content build. So we got to get that out of the way. I don't build with CC anymore. It's one thing that I like really, really stick to on my channel. However, when we got Island Living, one of the first things that I visualized in my head was this beautiful rainbow coral reef, very organic underwater mermaid palace. Very specific. I had an idea in my head of what I wanted it to look like. I was so excited to bring it to life. Uh, brought so much inspiration, yada yada. So, when the build and buy mode objects were announced, I was, of course, disappointed that we didn't really get anything that I could use to bring that out. We do have some coral pieces that come in debug mode, but I believe they actually have to be liberated, so they're technically still custom content until The Sims releases them in a patch themselves. And even from what I've seen, there was nothing really there that could could have done this the way that I wanted to. So upon me scrolling through Pinterest, I came across a creator uh, who had created something exactly what I wanted. And it is just this beautiful mesh of corals in rainbow colors, bright all over everything I could have ever asked for. Starfish, brain coral, feather coral, those long like stringy ones, the ones with the holes in them. You're going to see them all in a minute. So I had to make an exception for this. This was something I couldn't get out of my head and like it was on my list of to do and then I had to get rid of it but I was so disappointed and when I came across this I was like I can do this now. I can bring this build to life and so I had to do it. So yes this is a custom content build. However the link for the custom content will be in my description box down below. I highly recommend it that you download it. It's beautiful. Uh, it's the one and only pack of stuff you need for the this build to look properly the way that I designed it. So if you download the pack, unzip the folder, drop the whole folder in your mods folder, you are good to go. Everything else comes from the game. I didn't add any extra CC furniture or anything like that. So it's totally, in my opinion, 100% worth it. This is something I wish The Sims had done. Uh, maybe could be added in debug in the future. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll do another version that is like technically custom content free. But for now, I had to do this. I couldn't pass this opportunity up and I hope you guys understand, uh, but I don't do CC builds very often. So if this is your first video of mine, hi, normally nine times out of 10, I don't build with custom content. So stay tuned for that uh, and all of that stuff. But this was something I had to do for me. And if you want a version of this castle, kind of, not like 100%. It's a little different. But if you want a mermaid mansion that's very seashells, bright, organic, then I did a version and it's called Jellyfish Mermaid Manor. I will link the video at the end of this one. It uses only in-game content. So if you can't use custom content or you don't, 
uh, that version is for you. This version is for people who don't mind a little bit of CC in their game and are looking for something really different, really out there. So this build in general was built with, I would say like 99% game playability in mind. I wanted people to be able to use this. I thought of it as an underwater structure. So theoretically, like all of the open archways that you're seeing, mermaid sims could just swim in and out of those. Uh, however, there are certain things that you obviously have to have in order for it to work correctly. So I did add stairs later on in the back that are kind of hidden behind one of the pillars and then uh, some in the middle of it as well. So you can get to the various levels. And then we're going to do a full kitchen, a very, very large living room, a dining room, a bathroom. And I believe this build also includes five bedrooms total two master bedrooms and maybe three smaller bedrooms and then you've got this set of three gazebos off to the right that are just like additional little areas so the shape of this palace is very like middle east maybe a little bit indian inspired i wanted the shell to be very white clean bright and simple because i knew i wanted to really really do it with the corals and really overdo it in a way and make it so bright and colorful so I think it would have been overwhelming if you didn't start with a white base that's very simple in nature. And I think it's really, really pretty and simple. It's a little bit like Sailor Moon-esque in a way. It reminds me of the Silver Millennium quite a bit. So uh, that's kind of the vibe I was going for. I've also been playing this game recently, and I'm not going to tell you guys what game it is because I'm starting a Let's Play with it, believe it or not. Somebody who doesn't play The Sims, I'm going to be doing a Let's Play that has nothing to do with The Sims. And I think that video is actually coming out uh, either tomorrow or very close to this one. And in it, it's got a palace and that palace is shown in the background quite frequently. Uh, and that was very inspirational to me as well as far as like the general structure of it. I also went on Pinterest. Pinterest is one of my favorite places to get visual things for reference and ideas and maybe just get like a general aesthetic or clothing options when I'm doing create a sim or models faces if I'm trying to like come up with a new character that is my like go-to place more than anything and one of the searches that I've been frequenting is mermaids so anything mermaid related palaces underwater mansions things like that. So that's how I came up with Jellyfish Mermaid Manor. And that is how I pretty much got the general idea and flow for uh, this one as well, this mermaid palace. Um, I don't know what the difference between a manor or a palace or any of that stuff is, but I'm just trying to give things different names so that uh, I can direct people in the right direction when they ask about it. And yes, this is available for download on the gallery under my origin ID, the alleged simmer, all one word. Make sure you obviously have custom content allowed checked on the left hand side so that you can find it. Otherwise it will not show up. And I believe if you were to download it, let's say you don't download the custom content, which again, I really recommend it. But if you don't download the custom content, you're still going to get 99% of this build. I used so many plants for um, so many different packs and all of the furniture is in-game furniture. So it's going to show up. It's still going to have the base. It's still going to have the general like rainbow ombre effect that I was going for externally. You're just going to be missing all of the cool coral additions. So it'll still have a lot of what you're seeing. It'll just be missing that extra little oomph, that extra little like mermaid-esque feeling to me. And when I think of mermaids, I do often think of them living in things that are made out of the sea and made of things you would find in the sea and then their furniture, therefore, also kind of having that. So in my mermaid manor, my jellyfish one, I made a lot of the furniture inside out of the actual uh, like seashells that we have in the game and those seashells like the ones you're seeing in this build currently those are in-game items so somebody asked me about this previously and I'm going to repeat it again because I actually get a lot of questions about this the seashells that I'm using in this build and any of the previous ones that I've done that include them they are collectibles so in game if you're going to play how you come about that is that like usually a pack will have a set of things that are new to the game that your sims can collect my understanding being somebody who does not 
not play the game is that you can only obtain these items usually. I know that certain packs this isn't the case, but usually if you actually go in and collect them yourself, uh, I'm not going to do that, but luckily for me, there are wonderful, amazing people who take these collections and upload them to the gallery so that people can download them and then use them. So what I'm doing in this build is downloading one of the rooms that has the seashell collection over and over and over again, and then using the corresponding shells wherever I need, and obviously re-downloading the room every time I need another seashell. So it's a daunting process. It is something that takes me hours. This build in particular took me almost an entire day to do. Uh, fortunately for me, I had almost an entire day to work on this. So this was probably a 12 hour build or so. I did take breaks, obviously I do. This was actually going in an entirely different direction. At one point in the video, I had decorated the ground and the water completely covered in coral. And then I was gonna leave the palace very white and marble and clean, but it wasn't what I was visualizing in my head. So I completely scrapped all of that, took a few hours break. You need that every once in a while. And that's something I recommend to anybody who, if you're trying to get better at building, you're trying to, you're not feeling it, take a break. It's always helped me every time I'm going in a direction and I don't like what's coming out of it. When I come back, it's always so much better. So give yourself a couple hours, give yourself a day. Sometimes is even like the best route to go. And I promise you when you come back to it, you're going to be so much better off and things are going to start to feel a lot better. Uh, so that's exactly what I did for this build and came back to it and decided to go with this rainbow ombre effect. So the stairs down bottom are lots of pinks, lots of the seashells, lots of the coral, and then slowly fading into reds, oranges, a little bit of yellow up on the sides, all the way around, by the way. And the top of the front end of the palace, lots of green, lots of seaweed, a little bit of ivy from the various packs, and the larger structure in the back that serves as like the main tower in the middle, that is going to be the blue and purple uh, to round out the rainbow fully. There's a little bit of deviation, obviously, for the different colors here and there. I wasn't like limiting myself for that, but to make something that can be very overwhelming to look at with all of these colors and lots and lots and lots going on feel a little more streamlined and a little bit easier on the eye. I felt like this like subtle ombre was the way to go and I love it so much. It's exactly what I wanted and um like I said, we're using lots of plants from the various packs. We've got a little bit of city living, a little bit of romantic garden stuff, jungle adventure, all of that. So we got more than just the corals going on. So let's talk about the gazebos a little bit for a moment here. They are obviously three different heights. They're stilted into the water. One of the ideas that I had when I built my Jellyfish Mermaid Manor was to do this spiral staircase that was made out of clamshells. And I wanted to bring that idea into this as well. I feel like it's a really cool way to bring more like mermaid feeling type of things into the build. So obviously also you can't really place stairs on the diagonal in this game currently. So that's another thing you got to think about when you are doing this wraparound look. Uh, so for this one, I used the pack of stuff that I downloaded. One of the staircases is made out of starfish. One of them is made out of seaweed, I believe. And and that's what I'm talking about when I say that I built this with like 98, 99% playability in mind because that means that obviously they don't have functional stairs between the three of them. So how you want to go about using them in game is up to you. Uh, I obviously always recommend teleporting around seems to be the easiest and like way that I would fix things. But uh, you could also add the ladder. We got the ladder from Island Living. So you could add that off to the back and uh, kind of solve that problem. The first one is actually accessible from the main structure of the palace. I put a foundation piece all the way over to that. It's the other two that you're going to have a little bit of issues with. And um, I did, like I said, add stairs internally so you could get to the various levels of the palace. However, I thought of it more as something that you would teleport around here and there. So that's something to keep in mind when you download it and if you're trying to play with it. 
Uh, on the left of it, I did these really large coral little chunks where I just wanted to oversize some of the coral pieces, bring a little bit of it over into the water. And then we got this item from Island Living that is kind of like a float. It's like a balloon, but they are shaped like animals. They have fish and turtles, and I believe one of them's even a shark. So I thought it would be fun to size some of those up and down at various heights and put them amongst the coral and almost make them look like they are swimming. So I did that, and then on the far right later on in the video, we're going to do a few more of those. I wanted it to feel like there was animals around, because obviously when you think of mermaids, you probably think of animals as well. So uh, a lot of like the water decoration, I cut out of the video just to save for time, but when you download it, you're actually going to see in the water that there is a fair amount of like turtle stickers and fish and stuff like that so that it gives this overall like very alive feel. Luckily, we are building in Sulani and it is made to be placed in Sulani. So uh, you will have natural fish coming in and out of the lot and turtles and things like that and maybe even dolphins. So that'll all come into play either way. But even if you can't place it in Sulani, maybe you don't own Island Living yet. I wanted it to have something uh so we have that we have some stickers of just like fish and things like that going on you can add fish additionally to pretty much any lot with a debug item i didn't do that because of where i'm building but it is an option for those of you who maybe don't own solani yet or own island living and then we are on to the interior so there's two master bedrooms, one on the very top floor. I actually cut that to save time because it's very simple. We're using a lot of the furniture from Island Living and Jungle Adventure, but one of the things I love to do with these very bright, colorful builds is keep that same vibe in the bedrooms and really theme the rooms in a monochromatic way that you normally can't get away with if you were going to do like a regular room, like a big bubbly pink room would be a little bit crazy, but with this and the fact that it's mermaids. I feel like it works. So I chose pink for this first room. It's one of the colors that's primarily featured in the Island Living pack. And I did want to bring in some of the coral from the outside interiorly to bring some of that organicness and lots of plants and stuff like that inside, make the whole thing feel uh, very much a part of the water. And then we've got a smaller room off to the right. This one is my favorite shade from Highland Living, this beautiful cerulean aqua blue that we got. I love it. It's my favorite because I love to put like the orangey tones, like the coral and this blue color together. It's so pretty. It's one of my favorite looks to do for any room. But luckily we do actually have a couple of other items that you could consider to be mermaid style from some of the other packs. Uh, one of those is from Get Fancy. Famous. Get Famous randomly came with a few items that are oceanic, seashells, a little bit hinting at mermaids, uh, even though The Sims doesn't do hints, but some of the pieces definitely look like they were made with mermaids in mind, and people thought that even back then. Um, and then upstairs as well, I did want to do a bathroom. So this isn't a traditional bathroom, obviously, because in my head, mermaids don't really need to bathe. They're underwater. So the concept of bathing is probably like null and void. But for Sims, you obviously have to. So I wanted to do something. And I had this idea. It's one that I used in my Jellyfish Mermaid Manor as well, that maybe they don't take baths the traditional way. It's more of like a seaweed scrub. So I used the really, really beautiful like gold trimmed high end bathtubs that you get from Get Famous. And then I put plants in them almost as if they would just like lay in the seaweed. And that was kind of like the bathing process. So a couple of those with the waterfalls, no toilet. Uh, again, because it's something I don't really think about when you think of mermaids, but if you were going to actually play, it is something you would have to add. There is a matching toilet from Get Famous. You could easily just pop it in uh, the back corner and go on your merry day. Um, and then downstairs, I originally, I was not going to do a kitchen. This was going to be very open, very like living room after living room, maybe a couple of extra bedrooms, but then I thought about how many people would be maybe as excited as I was to possibly play this in game. So going to do a full kitchen, a little bit of a dining room, an additional bedroom, and a couple of small living room areas, kind of in that open way that you would picture in a palace uh, like this rather than a dedicated space. So for the kitchen, 
I think this is where I probably struggled the most in the build. I was thinking a lot about mermaids and how maybe a kitchen for a mermaid would look a little bit different than somebody who's a human because uh, they have different needs. And I often think about mermaids as being vegetarian. So I didn't want to do anything that implied otherwise. And I also just wanted to carry in any kind of idea I could about making it look like, you know, what a kitchen would look like for a mermaid. So lots of the decorations are just plants lots and lots of them I kind of overdid it but in that way that I wanted to and any kind of fruit basket and bowl uh the cool item we have I think from city living that's like the golden fruit uh right on the table in the middle and I did picture royalty living here so that was another thing to keep it a little bit high end and a little bit over the top lots of gold trimmed things the things that we got from get famous which again seem to have come in handy with this build a lot more than I thought it would have but uh as with a lot of my builds recently I've been using pretty much every pack for these bright colorful ones like this I don't end up using things like vampires or um spooky stuff so other than that, pretty much the whole catalog, a lot of romantic garden stuff, backyard stuff maybe here and there, especially for the plants. Plants is where I tend to go a little bit overboard. So kitchen's a little bit simple. I did open it up into the other room and put some more archways in between the kitchen and the dining. And we're going to decorate that in a moment here. There's a lot of these towers around and I wasn't really sure how to fill them up. I did think about maybe just doing a bunch of chairs, but the fact that they have these open archways, you can see into all of these towers from the outside. So I wanted to put something more organic inside. So I decided on this big bushy plant we got from Jungle Adventure. It reminds me me of seaweed so much or something just very tropical in nature so uh, I put those in the towers with some lighting just to give that kind of look especially from the exterior and then we've got this big open area in the middle so um, I created this structure in the middle and it's using a couple of different what do you call them sculpture items from various packs. One of them I think is from Debug, that big twisty one. And then you've got the flower bed, just combining them all together to make this really interesting looking centerpiece, something very pretty to walk into. This would be like the main entrance where people will come into the building. So I wanted it to be uh, something that was a little bit eye catching and bright and had the same general themes as everything else from the mansion um, right in the middle. And then we had more room off to the left and right. Originally, I was going to do a an additional bedroom, but that was when I realized I really didn't place too many areas for uh, like a given dedicated dining room area. So I decided to combine it a little bit, do like this driftwood style, almost like they found some wood in the ocean, which obviously you would find, um, and do like this little bit of a dining area, some books and things like that. I wasn't totally worried about being 100% accurate. Like you're going to see me use candles a few times in this build. And obviously that's not something that would work underwater, but I'm not worried about it. So you guys shouldn't be worried about it either. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, sometimes you got to do a little decorations for aesthetic, even if it doesn't really make sense to the theme of the build. And I think that that's okay. I did also want to use like a couple of pictures here and there. I really liked the idea of using photographs of things that, or just paintings of things that are maybe like pictures of things that are far away. Um, and I like the idea that royal mermaids like travel a lot I don't know why but I just thought that that would be like something that they would do like go to the various uh seas and travel and they might have pictures from their trips and stuff like that or they found them I don't know shipwreck all that kind of stuff um and yeah this is where I use the candles so I know I'm gonna get comments but I don't really care because <laughs> at this point in the build I was done so many hours poured in this is actually the final bedroom and pretty much the end of the build so we are going to be coming up to the screenshots there are many so stay tuned for that let me know what you guys thought of this build would you like to see more mermaid related things that's pretty much all I've been doing recently but like I said I'm starting a new let's play for this game I am so excited about and I really hope you guys check it out because I'm gonna have fun with this either way uh and I, I'm just excited please check it out when it's live thank you guys all so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe hit that little bell icon below to turn on post notifications so you can get updated every single time I post and I will talk to you all in the next one